Today I want to come to you all and show you a granny rectangle. This is another one of my videos that I want to do in connection with blogging more, vlogging more, and um, doing more videos for um, for March. So I'm hoping you can see this okay without being too close. So what I just did is did my slip knot. I'm going to do this tutorial with a size K, which is a 10 and a half hook. I'm just using some scrap yarn that I have. And I just want to do this um, because there's so many people that have asked me how to do it since they've seen my uh, cowboy's blanket and um, the blanket that I made for my son. And so here we go. So first thing that I do is I loosely do a chain of 10. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And they're loose. I do them loose for a reason. If you you know that a crochet stitch, and this pink is probably way too bright, you have the V on top, in the back you have that hump. For this, I actually work in those humps. So what you want to do is now you want to yarn over, and we're going to skip two chains, and in the third chain, we're going to do a, a two double crochets. And I'm trying to do this. I should have wound that actually here we go just a second I gotta get okay, a better thing for my yarn this is a um, big coffee mug that I painted at a pottery place and this is what I placed my yarn in the other one was too small it wouldn't have come out okay so I'm doing two double crochets in the second chain from the hook, I mean, I'm sorry, in the third chain from the hook. And we're going to go in the hump on the back side of your needle. So let me come in closer. And you're going to hear the kids, they're on spring break. But I wanted to do this for you this week. So here's the third one. I'm going to go into that hump and we're going to make two double crochets. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over through two. I'm going to do another one in that same opening in that same hump and here we have our first cluster because the two stitches that we skipped will count as one. And now we're going to skip two chains and then do three double crochets in the next. So we'll do three in that third. one double and I'm doing this extremely loose um, one for demonstration and two because whenever I'm making a blanket I try my best not to knit I mean not to crochet too tight because it makes my blankets more fluffy and they work up faster especially when I'm using a big hook I'm going to skip two more chains and I'm going to work three double crochets in the last chain Now what you want to do, once you get to this last double crochet, we want to chain three, two, three, and then we're going to turn, and now we're going to work in those same stitches, but on the opposite side, okay? So when you work in the hump, the beauty of it is on the other side, you still have those perfect V's. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work in those openings, I mean those same stitches on the opposite side, and we're going to do three double crochets in this first 
thing. There we go. It's one. Two. Three. Let's pull that out just a little bit so you can see. We're going to go into the next opening and we're going to do the same thing. Now one of the things about um, crocheting loosely on that chain is that it will make it so that the openings for doing these first stitches are clearly visible and you need that. And now we want to go into the last one. Again with three double crochets. Three. Now what we're going to do is chain three. And we're going to do a slip stitch at the top of the chain from the very first a chain that we did that counted as our first double crochet. Now when I do this particular one, you can do a slip stitch. I'm going to do it again. You can either do a slip stitch or you can do a single uh, crochet. And I, t I like to do a single crochet because it looks better from a distance on your piece. And you'll see here I'm, I'm going to do it. And it keeps that stitch from turning. I think this white background is just too white. Actually, I'm going to get something black. Yes, I'm changing the background in mid video. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. There we go. See? Now, the reason why I like this particular setup is for a few reasons and I want to show you. I looked at so many tutorials and I came up with this method because I like how in this line in the middle it's almost perfectly seamless versus it being, I had somewhere there was a line showing and so as your project builds you could actually see where you began. So let's do the second round and after the second round it becomes easy peasy. So, once you um, finish it off, you want to chain two. And we're doing only chain two because we did that single crochet. That really is kind of counting as your first chain. And in this same opening, which is going to be one of our corners, we're going to do two more double crochets in the same opening. And you're working inside of that, th that chain space that we completed from the, the other uh, round. I gotta make sure my terminology is okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next opening and we're gonna do three double crochets there. I hope you all can see this okay. My angle is a little, my arms are not long enough for the angle. Two, three. I'm going to do three more in the next in the next opening. And these are these last two. This double, um, this cluster and the cluster before are actually your side stitches. Okay, that's another double crochet. Now we're at the end where there was that chain three space and in this chain three space on the end we're going to do um, two double I mean two clusters with a chain two and I'm going to show you because I'm saying it but I don't know if I'm saying it right you're going to do a double crochet three of them three which is your first cluster we're going to chain two 
one, two, and do another cluster of three double crochets. Two, three, and then we're going to chain one. And now we're going to do another double crochet, a uh, double crochet cluster. So you're going to do three more double crochets. Two, three, and we're going to do um, a chain two, one, two, and another cluster. And I'm going to pull back in just a second so you can see what I am doing. And this is going to look bunched up for this round and it's going to work itself out towards the end. But let's see what we just did. We did um, a double a cluster, chain two, cluster. We did a chain one in between those clusters. Then we did a cluster, chain two, cluster. Here are your two corners. And this is a side. And here's the side we just worked. So really this is going to give us our final, um, when we do the other end, it will be our final four corners. And it will you'll see it perfectly once we get to round three. So let's continue. And the next opening we're going to do um, a cluster of three double crochets. And from here I'm just going to say a cluster. All of the clusters have three double crochets. The great thing about this is it's very forgiving, forgiving in that you can do doubles, you can do um, trebles, you can do singles. As long as you keep the pattern repeat the same. In the next opening we'll do another cluster. And I'm doing this sort of fast because I'm making the assumption you know how to do a double crochet. Do them three. And then the next opening which will be our end where we've already done one cluster from the beginning. So we need to do just like the other end. We need to do two clusters separated by a chain two. Then we'll do a chain one and then we'll do an additional cluster and do um, a chain two and slip it into the big top of that um, last the first chain. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do a cluster. Two. Uh oh, I missed that one. Three. Then we'll do chain two, one, two, cluster, and now we do a chain one. And our final cluster on this side is one, two, and three. And we're going to do chain two, one, two, and we're going to do, I'm going to do a single crochet at the top of that first chain. And there you have it, it's starting to take shape. So now this final, this next round, which is going to be the third round, is going to be the one that will establish our rectangle shape. And from here on out, you will just repeat what we will do in row three until the project reaches your desired size. So we're going to chain two. And actually what I'm going to do, instead of chaining two on here, I'm going to slip stitch across until I get to this side opening. I'm going to do a slip in this stitch. And I'm going to slip in this stitch. Uh -oh. I'm doing this because it'll make those ends easier to see for you. Normally I wouldn't because it doesn't bother me, but it'll make those corners a little more visible. And so now we're on a side. We're going to put a cluster there by chaining one, two, and then do Two more double crochets. I'm working them in the opening like a standard granny square. I'm going to do another um, cluster in the next opening. Three. A cluster in the next opening. 
and these are your sides. You're working a cluster in every opening except for when we get to our corners. And now we're about to go into a corner stitch, which was when we did the chain two. So we're going to work in that corner stitch. We're going to do a cluster, chain one, cluster. my first I missed my corner and then there's that opening here where we did the chain one we're just going to, to make a cluster there just one cluster and now we're back to our other corner where we're going to do a cluster chain one cluster go chain one and another cluster sometimes I just don't get that last stitch the way I want to especially when I work with larger needles um, um, hooks oh, brain is still thinking knitting and there's our second corner done and now we're going to do a cluster in each one of the side openings and I'm working right into that opening. I am kind of have this dangling and that's why my fingers seem like they're everywhere. So that'll be level with this camera. There's another. And another. And a cluster in the next opening. And then we will be working on our other corners. Now we're back at the corner space. We're going to do two clusters separated by chain one. And this is actually our third corner for this round. Chain one. Okay, and now we're going to work one cluster in that opening, that chain one opening on the end. And then we're going to work our final corner for this round where we will do a two clusters separated by chain one. So a cluster. And then we'll chain one and an additional cluster. Two. Three. And then we're going to you either slip stitch or do a single crochet to join at the top of that chain. And I'm going to do a single crochet. And from here on out, if you slip stitch across, you'll always be one of the side clusters which makes it easier for being able to view. So I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to pull back and show you what we've done. Let me pull this up. Okay. There you go. This is the beginning of your rectangle. You can't see that. It's pretty seamless here. And you'll just keep going around uh, just like a um, granny square, you know, on those corners, you can do a chain one or you could do a chain two. You could even do a chain three. But I found when I'm doing those first three rounds, the way that I just did it, it helps it just to kind of have some so, um, solidify the shape. And then once you get to round four, that's when I would do if you want to do a chain two or a chain three on those corners because the corners will be more pronounced if you do like let's say a chain three. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one final round because this round will be a lot more defined uh, so that you can see it. If you were just looking at this video to see how to do a granny rectangle, you now know how to do it. If you want to just kind of see what happens to the corners as far as their pronouncement from this to what I usually do for my actual blankets to stick around for a little bit longer. And I'm going to um, work my way around. I will not edit this down. <laughs> so you just got to work with me here. As you see, I have my yarn in a really large um, coffee mug. I actually need to go do another one because I actually love drinking from that coffee mug. But it does great with my small either cakes of yarn or my small balls so that they won't run, roll around everywhere. And now I'm on a corner, my first corner for this round. And on this corner, I'm actually going to chain three. One, two, three. I do not make those chains loose, but I don't make them too tight. I found that when you do a chain three on those corners, it almost makes the corners look as if they have a point. And see that? How it's almost like, so you have almost a perfect, um, edge or corner. I'm going to do one more so that you can see it. And as you go around, if you are not familiar with just a traditional granny square, all of your spaces you will continue to do a cluster. On your corners, you will do two clusters separated by your either chain one, chain two, or chain three. And I am on this round doing chain three. One, two, three. And those two clusters with those chain stitches in those corners are what creates your corners. Me talking and doing this at the same time. See that corner? Look at that. I just love it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm almost done. I hope that this has been helpful. Um, as always, just ask questions in the comment section or visit me online at my blog, my crafting blog at essenceofme.com. I will be bringing more videos for March, which is National Craft Month, if you are watching this in March. This is the second little mini tutorial or demonstration that I've done this month. Yay! <laughs> And so we're almost at um, our next corner. Now this is the exact pattern that I used on my last blanket. It's not for my first one, but this is the adjustments that I made for my second one because I did not like some of the um, openings and gaps. One, two, three. The gaps that were made um, by some of the other tutorials that I tried. And so this is the one where it was just a mesh of all the things that I saw and it produced the result that I wanted. And now we've just finished that corner. We're back on the side where we're doing a cluster for every opening. Okay, this is our last cluster before we work our final corner. And now we're doing our final corner, which is again two clusters separated for me by the chain three. Okay, talking and working. Not my strong suit. Okay, I'm almost done. Chain three. And one final cluster in that opening corner. Two. And three. And now to finish it off, close it 
And the, and the truth is, you don't have to do this perfectly when you do it with a single crochet. And I'll show you. It causes that stitch to kind of lay. So there we go. I'm going to pull this up. And there you go. Look at that. See the corners? And you have your granny rectangle. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Um, you see these openings here. And these ends, you can actually make them smaller by maybe doing a chain two. But I don't mind those as much. It just stabilizes everything for me. Um, and you can play with this. I mean, this is just how I do it. You can do it any other way. But from here, it's just you roll. Because you just keep going around. And I continue to do the chain three on the corners from here on out. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, leave me any comments, questions, or concerns in the comment section. If you are not already a subby to this channel, please subscribe. I look forward to having you. And if you are a subby, I really appreciate you. And thank you all for watching. Take care, and I will talk with you all hopefully sooner than later. Goodbye.